Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and I'm excited to have you here with me today to talk about a new exposure draft that's come out of the AICPA on AUC Section 600 and group audits. I have to say, when group audits first came out, um, it didn't get a lot of attention. And then as we got closer to implementing AUC Section 600 in 2012, we started to notice that there were actually some pretty big changes in there. Uh, and so I taught a lot of classes on group audits and worked on work papers and things like that to capture the information. Um, and as a result of some changes in peer review, but also convergence, right? The ICES are working on a similar project here we are um, going to have a new proposal for group audits. Um, so this proposed SAS was issued on March uh, 23rd of 2022 and comments are due June 21st of 2022. Uh, and the ASB, as I said, has been monitoring the projects of both the IAASB and the PCAOB. So both, you know, sort of a, a key area of focus. And so they were really looking to uh, clarify and to make things a little bit easier here, um, but also to make sure that there was some consistency. And so one of the big biggest changes you're going to notice is in definitions. So the first thing is that we have this term group financial statements. Um, and these are financial statements that include financial information of more than one entity or business unit through, and here's the term, consolidation process. But that doesn't necessarily mean full-on consolidation. Um, it could be consolidation. It could be proportionate consolidation. It could be an equity method of accounting. It could be combined financial statements or aggregation of uh, branches or divisions. So very consistent with what the extant standard looks at here. It's not just parent sub relationships. It's not just about component auditors as we're going to see. Um, it's really about aggregation risk. They also update the definition of a component auditor. Um, and that is because we're gonna have two definitions. We're gonna have component auditor and what we call to as the referred to auditor. Um, so a component auditor is an auditor who performs work related to a component for purposes of the group audit. Um, and they are part of the engagement team. So they are doing work um, and they are part of the engagement team. We're gonna have a new term called the referred to auditor. And this is one that's performing an audit on a component, but we are going to make reference to it. And so as a result, they're not gonna be a component auditor anymore because they're not part of the engagement team. So in AUC section 600 currently, we call both the referred to auditor and the component auditor, component auditors. Um, and so now we're going to um, talk about again here, the current concept of referred to auditor is actually within the definition of a component auditor where we were making reference in AUC section 600. Um, um, so we're going to uh, differentiate. We're also going to replace the term group engagement team. Um, and I think that's a really important uh, consideration here. And we're just going to have this term group auditor, who is the engagement partner and members of the engagement team that are not the component auditors. Um, and so in this scenario, the group auditor is responsible for establishing the plan and strategy, directing and supervising any component auditors and their work, and evaluating conclusions. Because again, these are the, uh, the component auditors that we're sort of pulling in and treating as part of our team, right? We're not making reference to them. And so they clarify that when you're doing a group audit, all of the AUC sections still apply. So you still have to do risk assessment, you still have to go through this. And they include a subsection in each section that kind of talks about when there is a component auditor, because again, you don't have to have a component auditor to be a group audit. You have to have multiple components they can be audited all by the same auditor. But when you do have a component auditor, then for scalability purposes, they call attention to that separate instead of mixing it in, right? So for scalability purposes, you can just skip this if there is no component auditor. But probably the biggest change in this standard is related to a more of a risk-based approach. In the extant standard, they kind of give you size and whether it's a major component and then if you have to do an audit versus what your alternatives are. Uh, and so instead of doing the identification of these significant auditors and having to audit those components, they instead say, do a risk assessment 
What are the risks? And then be responsive to that risk in the group financial statements. So instead of having to uh, look at these components separately, you really look at a more holistic approach to getting sufficient appropriate evidence, and then you perform the response for that group financial statement. Um, so it's a little bit of a change here in terms of what the old requirements were, which was a little bit more prescriptive, to much more of a principles-based approach for handling the risk in a group audit, which again is aggregation risk. So this standard is again out for comment, so we won't have responses again until June. Uh, and so the, the theory here is when they do issue it, we'd have a little bit of time before we adopt. And so the proposed effective date is for group financial statements uh, audits for periods ending on or after December 15, 2026. So again, that sounds like it's a long way away, but we know time flies when we're having fun. All right, so that's a wrap on this week's blog. Again, you can take a look at the proposal. It's not so bad in terms of length, but has some pretty good understanding of risk. And I really like how they address the component auditor element. So I would definitely recommend a quick look. Uh, and if you want, you have the opportunity to respond up until June of this year. With that, I wanna thank you for joining me and I wish you a wonderful rest of your week. And I look forward to seeing you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.